Hey guys, happy Sunday. Hope everyone's doing good and having a great weekend. So um, this video is a little different from the ones I usually make. Um, this is more in reference to a hobby that I have picked up over recent times and enjoy, um, which is coding. Uh, why? Because it's uh, mentally stimulating and it's pretty interesting um, in terms of like teaching yourself almost another language, right? Um, so with that being said, um, some of the benefits I've gotten from it is I have become or I have noticed that I become a better problem solver, better researcher, which then benefits me in business and in investing. Why? Because I can research things a lot better, right? Or more efficiency with that. Um, so some of the cool benefits I've noticed from um, learning this, right? And making this a hobby of mine, right? So hopefully while I'm learning this, I can maybe teach as well. So that would be super awesome. So basically what I'll be doing here is I would be creating a simple exercise program. Um, guess my number where basically a computer generates a number and then um, a user via a browser then tries to guess that number. And depending on a, how the results of that, he would get feedback whether he's right or wrong. Um, so this kind of gives you an idea of um, how this stuff works. So first and foremost, basically I will create the directory or folder where I will be working or doing the exercise, right? So, um, that would be um, from, I would be doing it from the computer terminal. So here, the command to make a folder directory is make directory, M-K-D-I-R. Um, and then I would name the folder here, uh, computer guess number. That worked, cool. So now I would be going into that folder via CD, change directory, um, computer, Yes, number, cool. And then I would be making um, the files that I need to work and kind of work the exercise within the folder, right? Via coding and so forth. So touch, and here's where the command to create files um, is called touch index.html style.css main.js. So basically I will be using um, three different files for this exercise um, in uh, HTML, CSS, and um, JavaScript. Um, so computer guest number, here it is. I'm gonna open this in a editor. Uh, I like using this one, VS Code. Um, it's pretty powerful and has a lot of um, extensions and so forth that you can use that are very useful. Um, so first and foremost, I'll, I'll start off at the HTML. So with a, using HTML, here pretty simple stuff um, with uh, shift. So exclamation point now allows you to have a boiler, boilerplate, which is basically a template um, for typical HTML um, code setup. So from here, since I have a file for CSS, I would create a file. Um, I would link the HTML to the CSS. And then since I'll be using JavaScript, then I would also link the HTML to the JavaScript um, to be able to write JavaScript code that's used um, via the HTML as well, right? So source equals main. JS. So here I would put the name of the file that I'll be using, in this case, main.js, which is the file where I would be writing the JavaScript code in. Um, from there, I'll just, I guess I'll finish off um, the HTML code, right, that I will be using for this specific exercise. So I would be creating a h1 tag. Um, Jesus, I can't write right now. So h1 tag basically saying, giving um, information to the person on the website saying, hey, uh, whatever I'm gonna put in here, right? So, hey, you can 
you guess my number. Cool. And then um, paragraph tag. Uh, so in here, I would put something like, I have chosen a number between one through 100. Inclusive. And another paragraph tag saying, can you guess my number? Cool. So that's basically just um, some text on the website or on the yeah on the on the browser saying saying these uh, things right. Hey, can you guess my number? I have chosen a number between one and one hundred. Can you guess what number it is? What number it is? Cool. Um, so here now I would be using a form. A form um, basically then allows you to use uh, certain behaviors via the JavaScript. Um, in this case, I would be using inputs. And since it's a number, I would be using the type number to make sure that's a number. Um, minim minimal number is 100, max is 100. So the options are basically going to be limited between one to 100, step equals one, cool. Um, and then a button for user of the website to submit and in this case it would be a submit type button um so basically this will now connect to the form via the javascript and get the information from the user who is guessing the number um here i would put outputs uh to give the user feedback and i would give this a name so I can then um, target it from the JavaScript. So basically, I would give this feedback name. I would create another one. And then I would use this one to keep um, track of how many attempts the user takes. And I would name that one tries. So now for the fun part, the JavaScript. Um, JavaScript's a little bit of a harder language, but once you kind of grasp it, it's really um, fun to use. It's the word I, I can use. Um, and it's powerful, right? It allows you to do all kinds of things. Um, so it's very useful uh, language. Um, basically behavior, it, it's more of a behavioral language, right? That has action to it. So first and foremost, um, I will be creating a variable for the minimal minimum number, which is one. Then const max, another one for the maximum number, which is 100. And then a variable for the number of attempts taken, which I've named tries. So that would basically keep track of the amount of attempts the user takes to guess whether the number is right. Um, so, and then um, one last uh, variable for the random computer generated number. So what would I name this const computer number? number equals and in this case i'm gonna assign or give it a value of a function so get random numbers what i'll name the function well let me change over here all right cool so now i got to make that function um get random numbers so Make functions, use the function, func, shen keyword, which I can't spell right now for whatever reason.
Okay, so yeah, you use the function keyword and the name of the function. Um, there we go. Now, whatever this function is supposed to do, you write that code within it. Um, in this example, I need this function to return to me a random computer generated number. For that, I will use the method math.floor which gives you a, um, it returns a whole number. So whatever number you input, you can't input a decimal because it will return a whole number. And then I will use math.random, which returns a decimal number, a random decim decim decimal number between zero to 0.99. Um, so these two together return a whole number, right? In this case, I am gonna, since it's a decimal, I multiply it by the maximum number. In that case, that's 100 minus the min, minimum number plus minimum. And then I'll just close this off with plus min. So basically what this does is it returns a random number. So it generates a random computer number between one and 100. Um, that's the functionality of this function. Cool. And that is being called over here by the value. Uh, it gives the value um, to this variable here, computer number. Cool. So now um, I need a function for, um, Jesus, I can't spell function, for uh, the feedback. So update feedback. And I would give it an argument of feedback, cool. Um, in this case, what I'm doing is I am now attempting to get the output in the HTML side. So I'm trying to get this thing over here. Um, to modify it over here. And how you do that is through the DOM, um, uh, DOM manipulation. So I would now get that element from the other side through the JavaScript using documents, dot query selector. And here I would do that. So name equals feed back, boom. Boom, closes off. And now here I get text contents. I would get, I would input the value of whatever the hell I'm getting from it into it. Um, wait, then I would create, I would add it to a future variable. I would create name feedback in here. Cool, so that is done. Um, all right, function update tries. So this function would basically now update the tries, right? It would keep track of the attempts um, or it would allow me to modify the attempts the user takes um, to guess the number, right? Same, similar to the function above update feedback. In this case, I'm going to get the HTML element through the DOM. So DOM manipulation, and you do that through documents. If I could spell documents, dot query selector, similar as the one above, um, name equals tries in this case. And then I'll close it off there, which I missed it on the front. Uh, okay, cool. And same thing, I'm getting the tax content of it. Um, all right, let me see uh, if I remember how to do this. Text contents equals uh, template literal uh, attempts taken. And then here, boom, boom, tries. Cool. So here, basically, what I'm doing is um, this function is targeting this HTML element over here via the name tries. And it's going to allow me to modify 
um, what goes into it through here uh, via this variable here, tries. So these two things are connected dynamically. Um, cool, so that function is done. And now uh, the cool thing that I've learned throughout this stuff is that browsers have something called event listeners. Basically anything you do in a browser is has um, exists in some sort of way. For example, you press a key, uh, whatever key it is, the browser knows in the background, it doesn't really care unless an event listeners is created, but everything you do on your keyboard, whether click the mouse, click a key, inside of a browser, um, the browser is aware of it. So you can set functionality um, to things by listening for a specific event, such as a key press, uh, mouse click, and so forth within a browser. So in that case, um, what I'm going to do is I need to get the form um, from the HTML, so documents, uh, query selector, in this case, I'm getting the form tag from the HTML and adding an event listener to it, which will be a listener for the button submission. So when the button on the browser gets submitted, this event listener will be listening for that button submission and it will have some functionality to it, right? Um, so here, uh, E, so E basically stands for event, um, event dot prevent default. This is a method that prevents the browser from refreshing when um, the user submits their guess, right? Um, and from here, I will be calling another function that I haven't written yet. Cool, so got all that stuff going on. And then finally, I need a function for the guess. Cool. Um, here basically um, is where all the logic is done, where the guess of the of the user is gonna get compared to whether it being right or wrong, right? Um, so first, first and foremost, foremost. Um, I'm gonna get the input, right? The input of whatever the user um, inputs into the website. Query selector, cool. Inputs, so I get it via the DOM node. There we go, cool. And now I'll create a const guess equals uh, coercion of number in put dot value cool all right so here basically i am creating a variable for the guess and the guess equals whatever the input of the user on the website is value and that is being coerced into a number by this little um, plus operator here cool and here's where i'll create that feedback variable that would allow me to then um, manipulate all this stuff going on up here. All right, cool. So, and then within this function, I will increment the attempts by every try or attempt the user um, takes in the, in the browser, right? Cool. So this is called branching. Um, basically here, I'll make the comparison when the user inputs his inputs, their guess, their guess is going to be compared to whether it is right or wrong, um, to whatever the computer's generated number is. And in this case, it's going to be computer number. Cool. Um, so computer number is this variable up here, which has the value of this function function get number get random number is going to return a random number between 1 to 100 um so here if the user's guess is greater than the computer's random generated number i will give the feedback variable the value of string your guess is too high 
else if guess, so the user's guess is less than computer number, I would give the feedback variable the value of the string your guess is too low. Cool. And then finally, else um, feedback. So in this case, if the user guesses the number right, your guess is right. Refresh the browser to try again. Cool. Um, nice. So that's basically so far the guess function. Um, yeah. Uh, so if the user's guess is greater than the computer random generated number, it returns feedback to the user. Hey, your guess is too high. If it's, if the guess is less than the computer number, your guess is too low. Else if the user's guess is right, the feedback is going to be your guess is right. Refresh the browser to try again. Cool. And here, what I'll do is I'll add a little extra stuff like um, to lock the button and um, input um, if the user gets it right, right? So he won't be able to then guess again, right? So if I, how I would do that is I would target the button from the HTML selector. Here I'm getting the button, um, if I can spell button, and I would add dot disable equals true. Why true? Because this by default is false. Um, it would allow you to use the button over and over again. So basically what I'm doing with this line here is this activating the button in the HTML element. Cool. And I would do the same for the inputs, which I already have a variable for it up there. So I would just do input dot disable equals true. Cool. And now here, um, I did create this feedback function, which has an argument of feedback. So I like to look at this like an open door. It's like um, like dropping a uh, marble into this thing. And then um, it basically goes into the function. So what I would do there to give that, to basically, um, Give the uh, the variable the value of the the HTML um, DOM elements. I need to call or invoke that function in here inside the guess function, and give it the feedback arguments. Um, so now this feedback argument gets dropped in here, and then now it links with this variable here, which then now gets the feedback of whatever it is assigned, depending on the comparison of the user's number. So here you have three different possibilities of what the feedback can be. Um, and of course, every attempt the user takes will end up updating the amount of tries the user has taken, right? Um, cool. So, uh, initially outside um, global scope when the browser runs for the first time the function update tries will be called which is, which is over here which will then um, set the amount of attempts to zero for the first time um, and then I'll just console.log computer number to see on the console what is the computer random guess number cool so let's play around with this and see what's going on um so kind of plain screen but you can kind of see um here a little bit of what's going on uh so here's all the html elements h1 paragraph and so forth you can see them here h1 hey you can you guess my number um i have chosen a number between 1 and 100 inclusive and then this is basically just the information to the user and then it, the input here where user can choose a guess um, and he will then get feedback whether that guess is too low, too high, so forth. So console to open the console um, is uh, F12 um, or you can open the developer tools on your toolbar. 
here you can see an 18 that's the random generated computer number right so here basically um with this little exercise program a user unknowingly to uh, that number is going to be guessing numbers right and hopefully guess the the right number is 18 so submit you got the feedback here your guess is too low attempts taken one now it registers hey you took one attempt um, and that's being done um, through the function here, right? The guess function. Um, cool. So let's see if it works. Uh, the right number is 18, but I'm going to just, for the hell of it, play around with it. 20, um, your guess is too high, right? Cool. So here it says basically if um, guess is too high, it's higher than the computer number. In this case, I guess 20, the computer number is 18. It would give you the feedback. Your guess is too high. So now in 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 the branching, it get it gets assigned this because that's what occurred, right? Um, cool. And then the last option would be basically eighteen, and that should be the correct answer, right? Your guess is right. Press the browser and try again. Um, however, the the disabling is not working. Um, why is that? Uh, Document not querying dot disable equals true. Input dot disable equals true. Hmm. Yeah, that part's not working. Cool. Whatever. So um I'll now edit the page a little bit and make it look a little better, I guess. Um, which that would be the CSS side of things for adding color and so forth. Um to the page. Uh, so here, the form, basically, I'm giving it a background of red and um, height of 100, U height. So setting the height, make sure the color of the text color just set the text color to white. Um, see, font size, uh, which is the size of the text. In this case, I'll just make it large just to play around with it. Cool. Um, and then I'll just do the same thing for the paragraph test text here. Uh, so paragraph, white, same thing. Um, and I can customize the button to button let's see color uh white no red and then i'll make the background white cool let me see how that looks um really weird uh so yeah just playing around with it um and this is not fitting right because this should be in here. So I can just move all this stuff in here. Boom. And then move this inside the form too. Boom. Now you can kind of see how it looks a little different, right? Um, the one weird thing it's not working is the disabling inputs, inputs, document that query selector input that value feedback button we got a button here that I misspell that button dot disable equals true and that disable equals true cool so yeah um simple cool exercise to kind of play around with this stuff um uh guess my number exercise uh so um I like this stuff in terms of um you know, learning this technology and learning all these different languages and I guess getting better tech savvy, right? Because um, I like kind of understanding all these different uh, um, technologies, right? Because now tech influences the investment world. How, uh, if you think about it, what are cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies are written in code. Um, so having a better understanding of this stuff, you can now have a better understanding of those technologies and better an idea of what is um, 
cryptocurrency, right? And, and other things. So cool. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, I showed you guys something cool today. Um, I don't know if you guys are into this. I love this stuff um, as a hobby um, and I would be learning more of it and hopefully I can then be showing or teaching more of it, right? So um, with that being said, thank you guys for watching and um, talk to you soon.